Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can have peace of mind, real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making fast even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. In last week's blog I talked about who's the better advocate for your critically ill loved one, you or the intensive care team. You can check out last week's blog by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's blog I want to talk about five signs to look out for when it's time to let go if your loved one is critically ill and dying in intensive care. Before I get into today's topic I want to share a quote with you that I wrote on today's topic and the quote says We are all inevitably going in the same direction and therefore death is part of life. The sooner you can embrace that death is an inevitable part of life, the sooner you can deal with the fear that you might have about death and dying. Another way to look at it is that death is just the opposite of birth and that life itself is eternal. Society doesn't want to talk about death and dying and the majority of everyday people can't really give you any advice on how to deal with the inevitable because they are trying to avoid the topic at all cost. If society brings up the topic of death and dying it's usually in a sensationalized and hypey manner and it often completely misses the point. Everything in life happens for a reason including the death of a loved one in intensive care. The reality is that about 6 to 10 percent of all patients in intensive care are dying and your job is to make sure that you have peace of mind, control, power and influence even if your loved one is dying in intensive care. Not having peace of mind, control, power and influence in a real end of life situation in intensive care leaves you full of bitterness resentment and anger. If you don't know what you need to look out for the intensive care team will tell you what is quote unquote in the best interest for your critically ill loved one even if they are dying. And you need to be prepared as much as you can so that you can have an end of life situation on your terms. So let's get into today's topic. Intensive care is a challenging environment and it's even more challenging when your critically ill loved one is inevitably dying. As you have heard me saying before in my blogs and in my Your Questions Answered episode, there are many situations in intensive care where the intensive care team is trying to sell you and your family that a withdrawal of treatment or a limitation of treatment is quote unquote in the best interest of your critically ill loved one. Whenever the intensive care team is trying to sell you on a withdrawal of treatment or a limitation of treatment as being quote unquote in the best interest of your critically ill loved one, you need to make sure that First, you and your family agree 100% with this. And number two, you and your family have ruled out that the intensive care team is not trying to sell you and your family on a withdrawal of treatment or a limitation of treatment as being quote unquote in the best interest for your critically ill loved one because of the things that are happening behind the scenes in intensive care. 
if you have followed my blogs for any length of time you know by now that the things that are happening behind the scenes in intensive care are always impacting on how the intensive care team is positioning your critically ill loved ones prognosis and diagnosis you should also know by now that the care and treatment offered or not offered by the intensive care team is always a result of what's happening behind the scenes in intensive care therefore as a rule of thumb you should always pay close attention to what the intensive care team says how they say it when they say it and you should also pay close attention to what they are not saying how do I know well after more than 15 years intensive care nursing in three different countries where I literally worked with thousands of critically ill patients and their families I know and understand the secret intensive care language very well and I can help you translate the intensive care team's talk into your language so that you can understand what's really happening in intensive care. I have also worked for more than five years as a nurse unit manager in intensive care and that gave me plenty of insight into what's happening behind the scenes in intensive care. I have also seen and I have also been involved in many real as well as perceived end-of-life situations in intensive care and I know the difference a real end-of-life situation is real and no fancy equipment no surgery no miracle cure and no fancy drugs can save your critically ill loved ones life on the other hand a perceived end-of-life situation is a situation where the intensive care team is trying to sell you and your family on a withdrawal of treatment or a limitation of treatment as being quote unquote in the best interest of your critically ill loved one because the things that are hap because of the things that are happening behind the scenes in intensive care now if you are like 99% of the families of critically ill patients in intensive care and you have no peace of mind no control no power and no influence because you have been sucking up to the perceived power and the perceived authority of the intensive care team you probably still haven't noticed the difference between a real and a perceived end-of-life situation if that's the case it'll be easy for the intensive care team to quote-unquote walk all over you without you even noticing what's happening because you've been so enamored by the intensive care team's perceived power and perceived authority but now it's the time to wake up and it's time for you to take charge and make sure you know what to look out for so that you do know whether your critically ill loved one is really dying in intensive care so let's look at the five signs you need to look out for so that you know when it's time to let go let's get right into them number one make sure you have asked all the right questions and you get them all answered to your satisfaction if the intensive care team still hides behind their medical jargon and they're using medical terms without actually really explaining to you what's really happening in intensive care in words that you can understand there is a good chance that they are not open and transparent with you your job is to laser focus on all the right questions to start off with something 99 percent of the families of critically ill patients in intensive care are not doing and then laser focus on the answers we have lots of tools blogs articles videos and ebooks on this website where you can quickly learn what the right questions are and if you are really stuck you can always get one-on-one -on -one consulting with me via Skype over the phone or via email and SMS number two 
make sure that no matter what the circumstances you stay one step ahead of the intensive care team. The fact of the matter is that if your critically ill loved one is either very unstable and in a very critical condition or is in a life-threatening situation or is in intensive care for long-term treatments and long-term stays including long-term ventilation or your loved one may be having a severe or traumatic head or brain injury or your critically ill loved one may be threatened with an NFR not for resuscitation or DNR do not resuscitate order or your critically ill loved one may be in a situation where the intensive care team suggests a withdrawal of treatment or a limitation of treatment as being quote unquote in the best interest for your critically ill loved one or as I said your loved one may actually be in a situation where they are really approaching the end of life in intensive care and if you are finding that your critically ill loved one is in a, one of those aforementioned challenging difficult frustrating and often heartbreaking situations chances are pretty high that the intensive care team is trying to quote unquote sell you and your family on a withdrawal of treatment or a limitation of treatment as being quote unquote in the best interest for your critically ill loved one because of the things that are happening behind the scenes in intensive care. The more formal, the more authoritative and the more the intensive care team uses their perceived power and their perceived authority to quote unquote sell you on a withdrawal of treatment or a limitation of treatment in one of the aforementioned difficult, challenging and often heartbreaking situations. The more likely it is that the things happening behind the scenes are dictating the intensive care team's strategy and their positioning. Your job is to not buy into it and use your knowledge and your common sense and use our website to have your strong positioning and strategy at work. The 99% of families of critically ill patients in intensive care who have no peace of mind, no control, no power and no influence have no plan and no strategy and they are easy prey so to speak for the intensive care team. Let's look at the third sign. Has the intensive care team been open and transparent with you from the start and have they actively involved you and your family in the decision making process? Most intensive care teams are often not open and transparent and again they are often hiding behind their medical jargon and their medical terms. They often don't take the time to explain things in your language so that you can understand what's really happening. Intensive care treatment and therapy is often a combination of many little things adding up to a bigger picture. That's why it's such a specialized area. The devil is often in the detail and if the intensive care team isn't sitting down with you, explaining all the small things, the nitty gritty that add up to your critically ill loved one's therapy and treatment and also to their ultimate outcome and chances of survival. It's a clear sign that openness and transparency are not high on the intensive care team's agenda. The ideal scenario is where the intensive care team is open and transparent in their decision making process and even getting you and your family involved in the decision making process, period. Number four. Is the intensive care team using formal family meetings to quote unquote sell you and your family on a withdrawal of treatment or a limitation of treatment as being quote unquote in the best interest for your critically ill loved one? Formal family meetings are another tool in the intensive care team's toolbox to get what they want. Whenever the intensive care team is asking you and your family to come to a formal family meeting, your alarm bells should ring 
and your red flags should go up. Formal family meetings in intensive care with the intensive care team are the ultimate display of dominance, power and authority of the intensive care team. Whenever the intensive care team asks you and your family to come to a formal family meeting, you need to be prepared because the intensive care team in those family meetings knows what to say, they know how to say it, when to say it and they also know what not to say. If you are going in those family meetings unprepared and the intensive care team will walk all, of, all over you and your family without you even realizing what's happening. Number five. Is the intensive care team talking over you and at you or are they really in a genuine dialogue with you and your family? Again, getting what you want when your loved one is critically ill in intensive care, even in an end-of-life situation, and ultimately getting peace of mind, control, power and influence is a matter of good communication. Unfortunately, the intensive care team is often trying to avoid genuine and good communication and that's why most families in intensive care feel that the intensive care team is talking over them or at them but not with them. It's a terrible feeling to have and if you and your family feel like you are stuck you need to very quickly stop doing what the other 99% of families of critically ill patients in intensive care are doing and you need to get proactive and get the tools that will get you peace of mind control, power and influence quickly before it's too late. Remember, if you are failing to plan, you are planning to fail. So, how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one? And how can you spot the signs if your critically ill loved one is really dying in intensive care? And more importantly, how can you get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? You get to that all-important feeling of peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report you learn quickly how to get peace of mind, real power and real control and how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care or is even dying. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You will get real world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved ones situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You will get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. 
Thank you for tuning into this week's blog and I'll see you again next week in another update. Make sure you also check out our Your Questions Answered section where I answer your questions or send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Or you can call us. Find phone numbers on our contacts tab. Also check out our product section where you get more ebooks, videos and audio recordings and where you can also get one-on-one -on -one consulting with me via Skype, over the phone or via email by clicking on the products tab. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.